Artificial flowers have been used as decorations for hundreds of years. Initially, silk flowers made in China were displayed in homes and not commercially sold. As far back as the 12th century, Italian flower makers, using dye-colored silkworm cocoons, were the first to sell their floral arrangements. Modern imitations of natural flowering plants are endless in variety, stunning in color, with realism so impressive, they can look and feel like the real thing. Since the 70s, most are made of polyester fabrics. A worker places an iron cutter blade on top of non-woven polyester and then applies several tons of hydraulic pressure to complete the cuts. The result is 20 layers of flower petals. The worker wraps piles of 100 petals in elastic bands and sets them aside. Another worker places petals into a heated mold to give the fabric texture. Using a glue gun, a worker completes the flower's petal structure by assembling two different shapes of non-woven polyester petals. This is part of the flower head. In the coloring department, a worker paints the pieces of non-woven polyester using watercolor. She paints the edges of the flower heads in bundles of 100 at a time. The painted flower heads go into a microwave for two to five minutes. The dried flower heads now undergo silk screening one at a time using acrylic paint. Customers can choose among more than 50 different color patterns. The flower heads have been pressed to simulate natural curving. Using a glue gun, a worker connects the flower head to the petals of this Phalaenopsis orchid. The goal is not only to make the flowers look as real as possible, it's also to make them feel as real as possible, which takes us to the next stage. An employee puts two flowers together, lines them up, then adds a stick, which will be held in the next part of the process. She encircles them tightly with an elastic band. Another worker dips the two flowers in polymer, which helps make them feel real to the touch. She spins the flowers to remove as much excess polymer as possible. Workers then brush excess polymer from the petals. A worker attaches flower buds to the stem using green flora tape. She attaches the petals and flower head and continues to wrap the stem in flora tape until the entire length is covered. To make the leaves feel real to the touch, a worker dips them in polymer and wipes off excess with her fingers. After one hour of drying, the worker dips the same leaves in green polymer. Again, she removes any excess and sets the leaves aside for another hour of drying. Once they're dry, another worker gives the leaves a final coat of polymer paint. She removes the excess and sets the leaves aside for yet another hour of drying. All the drying is done at room temperature. Now coated with several layers of polymer, the leaves stick to each other. To fix that, a worker applies a thin coating of talcum powder with a sponge. The coating solves the problem of sticky leaves. With its many components fully assembled, this finished flower is a rather dazzling recreation of the Cymbidium orchid. Shipping these flowers requires careful packaging. They wrap the glass vase in clear plastic. and place it securely inside a polystyrene base. The flower is lowered into the box upside down. The base is snug enough to keep the flower from moving inside the box, which the worker then seals shut for shipping. Authentic looking and feeling, these striking flowers are sure to make any decor blossom.